just first of all, hand over to um, Dr. David Sargent, who initiated this project. And um, he's going to give a little bit of an introduction and then I'm going to take you through some of the format. Um, so over to David. Thanks, Emma. I'm going to be really quick because Emma's it's quite a complex thing. I think we're going to have to be patient with each other and technology um, running this kind of thing on Zoom. But it seemed to be the only way to get everybody together. Um, and given the storms, maybe it's a good thing we did it this way. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I guess, a couple of things leading into this workshop. One was I was thinking how many um, different people from different backgrounds, different expertise, different stages of life, different interests we've got in the room today. But I think we're all here because we share one one thing at least, which is that we care about where we live and we care about the future. So we're all here for that shared reason. And I guess the second thing, I mean, maybe come, maybe I'm talking more to myself for this one, but coming out of a kind of fairly frantic work day, a fairly frantic day with my sort of day job, um, just a reminder to myself really to, I guess, in a sense, leave that at the door because we don't get many opportunities like this very often, like a chance, a license really, to just have fun, imagining what we could do, and what could happen. And also then to have those visions turned into amazing pieces of creative art by normally quite expensive professionals, but for nothing. Um, it's not something that will come around very often. So to make the most of it really, um, just to kind of enter into the spirit of the imagining and what follows. So now I'll pass back to Emma, who's gonna kind of describe more, more practical detail what's gonna happen. Um, yes, thank you, David. So the aim of today's workshop is to develop ideas for a positive net zero vision of your location that people would want to live in and to sort of have the opportunity to bounce your ideas around with the net zero advisors and to get inspiration for what you'd want to do for this vision that's going to be created by the commissioned creatives. Um, so in many places, work is already well underway, whereas in other locations, the net zero journey is nearer the beginning. So we asked in the preparation pack um, for you to just indicate what's already been done. And this was um, encouraged by James McKay in the last workshop, um, the man who draws the future from Leeds University. And because it really helps to bring things into reality if your visions are built on what's happening where you are and keeping it grounded in the possible while imagining the best possible scenario for your place. So in this workshop, there's the opportunity to be more interactive than last time, which had brilliant um, presentations and we had so much positive feedback from everyone about how they enjoyed the advisors presentations but this time there's more chance to ask questions to give your opinions to share and discuss and to engage directly with the Devon Carbon Pan themes and those themes just to remind you I'm sure you all know economy resources waste transport built environment food land and sea and energy and the workshop will be structured around five breakout rounds breakout room sessions of 12 minutes each. That all seems very precise, but it's just trying to squeeze everything in. Um, and in each breakout room, there will be an advisor with a specialism in one of the particular um, net zero um, plan themes. And there's also going to be a chair who will help guide the session around the two key questions from the pack rather than all of them. And those two key questions which we'll remind you of are what do you see as the best version of your location in relation to the theme that you're looking at um, so one of the five themes that will be um, engaged with for those for that session and can you identify specific locations streets landmarks or places or particular areas where you would want those things to happen um, whatever that might be um, from more pollinators to solar panels or, or whatever it might be. And this is just a guide, these two questions. So of course you can talk about any other related issues and it's just as a starting point. So based on numbers, there are, um, the breakout rooms will either be one community or they will have two communities represented. So you will discover who is in your room when, um, when you're allocated. And then, um, then we ask you that you will just introduce yourselves very briefly so everyone knows who's in the room. And in some cases, everyone will know that already. Um, and the chair will be there as well. Um, 
and um, uh, the chairs will, will help you to keep time. And after 10 minutes, there will be a two minute left notification in the Zoom room and the advisor will move out of the breakout room into another room um, and the, the chair and the community members will stay in that same room. So you don't need to do anything at all. So the breakout rooms will be recorded. So please let Rosie know in the chat if you don't want to be recorded. And we also ask that one or more people from your location act as note takers um, to record the ideas from your group. And that also to think about who will report back your ideas, just the key highlights that you'd like to share with everyone here tonight. And that will be after all those sessions. So after all the breakout room sessions, finishing at approximately or as close as possible to 12 minutes past seven, we will all return to the main room and share the community's insights. And then we will have the next steps session where we'll talk about how's this gonna work, what's gonna happen next. So before we go into that, I'd just like us to briefly introduce all of the advisors who are here. There are uh, many more advisors than there were last time to help spread the discussion though. Um, so for everyone, just all the advisors, just to go around and briefly say who you are and what your area is that you're talking about tonight. Um, and also all the chairs, just to introduce yourselves as well. So it's not a surprise when, um, when communities end up in a room with you um, in a bit. So um, thank you very much. I hope that doesn't sound too complicated. In, if we were doing this in person, the, the, the version of it would be, we'd all be in a room together, there'd be lots of tables and we'd just walk around the tables. So that's the simple version. But on Zoom, it's a little bit more complicated, but hopefully it won't feel like that once we're doing it. So anyway, over to you all and enjoy, have fun. And uh, we look forward to hearing about your amazing visions. So I'll start, I'll start off with Stuart. Um, Yep. Hello. Uh, good to meet you all. I'm Stuart Barr. I'm an academic from the University of Exeter in the Geography Department, and I specialise in transport and mobility, particularly in travel behaviour change, but also thinking about visions for our places to try and promote more dwelling and less need for travel and also healthier travel. So look forward to the discussions with you all. Thank you, Stuart. Angelina? Hi there, I'm Angelina Sanderson Bellamy. I'm Associate Professor of Food Systems at UE Bristol. And so my area of expertise is all things related to food systems, how to make them healthier, more sustainable and accessible for everyone. Thank you. Bobby? Uh, hello, yeah, I'm Bobby Hughes. I work for Devon County Council's Waste Management Department. Um, I am going to be um, in the rooms regarding resources and economy. There's a very strong link between waste and the resources and the economy. Um, uh, and my sort of background is uh, community engagement and uh, waste management and environmental issues broadly. Thank you. Ollie? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ollie Franklin. I work for a not for profit in Exeter called Regen, uh, who's an independent center of energy expertise and market insight and i'll be kind of helping with the discussions on energy supply energy flexibility all those lovely uh, technologies under the, under that that uh, mantle i uh, look forward to the discussion sarah hi everyone my name is sarah lee i'm an architect i work here in Plymouth. i've been working closely with the university over the last couple of years um, masterminding a webinar series called Future Plymouth 2030, where we've been exploring lots of ideas and theories and technologies about carbon reduction in the built environment and the construction industry. So hopefully I'll be some use to you. Thank you. Andako? Hi everyone, my name is Adoko Bruce and I'm an academic here at Plymouth University in the Department of Built Environment. Um, yeah, I look forward to talking to you about um, low carbon design buildings and also occupant behaviour in buildings. Thanks. Thank you. Graham? Good evening. Uh, Graham Devine. I'm an architect and I teach in the School of Architecture as well as running a practice. Thank you. I think that is all our advisors for tonight. We also have people might be wondering why isn't Jill speaking from um, from Exeter? But Jill has got her other hat on tonight. Um, Jill would normally be speaking about food, land and sea, but she's going to be representing Transition Exeter. 
So um, yes, I expect people will speak with Jill later, but thank you. Um, so our chairs, um, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is uh, Dr Thomas Murphy, so I'm a, an academic at the University of Plymouth um, and I'm currently Greenwall's Industrial Research Fellow um, as part of the Low Carbon Devon Project, which is a Sustainable Earth Institute um, project at the university. And my area of interest is nature-based solutions. Thank you. Um, Paul Lunt? Good evening everyone, um, my name's um, Paul Lunt, I'm an uh, academic at the University of Plymouth um, in uh, my area is environmental science, and I'm uh, director of the Low Carbon Devon project that, uh, that Tom just spoke about. Thank you. And Doug. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Doug Eltham. I work in the Environment Group at Devon County Council, and I'm the climate lead um, at that authority. Thank you. And uh, David, who we've already met, but David will be a chair too. Hi everybody, I work on literature and culture and the near future, how to many how it's imagined at Plymouth and I'm also involved with low carbon dev. Fantastic, um, thank you everyone. Um, so now the exciting part begins for Rosie at least, um, where everyone will be put into breakout rooms. So if you just accept when you um, put into breakout rooms. Welcome back everyone. Um, we hope you enjoyed that quick um, run through and consultation with the advisors. And the next stage of the process will be for someone from each of the communities to just give the highlights really of, of your vision and anything that's come out of um, your discussions today. So if we'd like to sort of go around the communities, um, I can nominate people unless there are any volunteers who'd like to, like to start. Um, maybe Jill, if that's okay, Jill. Oh, Jill, you're muted. Um, we did have someone in, in Ashburton um, who was a, a note taker and was going to be the spokesperson. So if they if they if the, that person wants to step forward now, that would be great. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anita, who was taking notice, just nipped out to the loo, although she wasn't taking notes in order to um, present the highlights, I'm afraid. Um, uh, we're all a bit. Um, <laughs> We're all we're a bit talked out. Talked out, yeah. I, I can quickly do it. I was taking notes as well. well, um, I, I, well thanks for David. Thanks for your chairing, which which was mm. really good. But please, yeah, please do give us your highlights. That's probably quite a useful thing. Yeah. So this will not be exhaustive, needless to say. But I thought it was interesting. There were lots of overlaps between the different um, different areas. So I, just running through some of the themes and picking out odd highlights. So for um, we started with energy and. Both locations talked about the possibility of having turbines on rivers and hydropower on rivers as a kind of really visible and imaginatively powerful way of harnessing different kinds of energy and also, of course, being sustainable. Um, in the built environment, there was lots of emphasis on, on retrofitting. Um, I think everybody knows about the importance of that and not building new houses. And I guess one of the challenges for the creative teams will be, you know, how do you visualise retrofitting in a kind of excited, exciting and appealing way? Um, I really am going at, at pace just picking out um, highlights. So food, land and, and sea. Again, both locations spoke about um, different ways of growing food and allotments and access to food and addressing food poverty. But I think both mentioned like the possibility of sort of urban agriculture and um, growing food in all over a city, all over a town and making use of, of food that way. And Angelina highlighted the importance of people being engaged in the food that they are eating in some way, like knowing the farm or having been involved in its production themselves. Um, with economy and resources, my chairing sort of broke down because we didn't get to hear enough from Bobby. Um, but uh, there was lots of talk from both locations about, about stimulating the local economies. And um, we were wondering about the possibilities of new forms of technology reviving the old idea of local currencies. Um, which can be used internally with independent shops, communities, businesses, councils. Um, and people need to be able to give them time. So possibly of time banks, allowing people maybe on a four day week to give more of their lives and energy towards, you know, sustainable and fun ways of living. Um, and then transport. Um, both locations spoke about 
bikes and cycling um, and the need, Stuart reminds us of the need for streets to look different and to reclaim the streets and both spoke about possibility of, of micro bus services and more flexible um, bus services on some African models or app based models so uh, kind of rural uh, Uber for the masses was mentioned at one stage but yeah interesting how many how in different guises the same ideas came up and also how many of them were sort of immediately that it, they had that wow factor they were very imaginatively stimulating and appealing oh, that's it thank you david that's that's really helpful um are there any other comments from the ashburton team that you'd like to add at this stage uh no thanks very much i think it was better coming from david there um he picked out most of the same things that the best things that we would have said i think um thank you thank you so let's move on to the exeter team oh I, that was me summarizing both both groups because they were both in the same room okay um let's let's move to the tiverton team okay that was my group is there um was there um a spokesperson already nominated if not i can do it I'll, I'll, I'll do it, shall I? I can't see anybody in that group, but I'll, I'll do it. And anybody can jump in uh, if you'd like to add anything. Um, yeah, so we started with Foodland C. Um, we had uh, quite a long conversation about the idea of the hinterland of villages around Tiverton, um, both providing food into Tiverton and vice versa. So you get this sort of uh, food economy uh, in the rural area, keeping food local. Um, we also had the idea that David just talked about around, around urban food. We didn't use that phrase, uh, but I've realised that's what we were talking about and uh, helping people make best use um, of their gardens and window boxes and things like that to be growing local food and sharing local food where there's excess produce uh, within the community. We spoke about rewilding uh, in the lower grade agricultural areas uh, around Tiverton um, and we spoke about community fridges that, that uh, is a project that's already existing, uh, making better use of allotments. Um, so all sorts of ideas there um, around food, land and sea. Um, then we went on to economy resources uh, and waste. And we spent quite a while talking about community composting. Um, so there's a strong message there that um, that would like to be replicated in Tiverton as it already happens in Sanford, Peveron uh, and, and Elfcombe. Uh, we spoke about swap shops, scrap stores, uh, a mobile library of things. They're all ideas for the future. Um, and we also spoke about how uh, local businesses um, that produce a certain type of waste uh, could be actually that, that waste could be a resource for another local business. So some way that might be quite challenging for the artists uh, to show some sort of, uh, um, you know, one person's waste is another person's treasure, that sort of idea. Um, then we moved on to transport, um, and the first thing we spoke about was uh, the need for cycleways, um, segregated cycleways along busy roads, uh, making better use of country lanes as designated cycleways. Um, we went on to talk about um, perhaps if we can't get designated cycle lanes, then let's use, lose some, use the old railway line, particularly one in the X Valley. But then we also spoke about reinstating that as a railway. Um, and perhaps even having a railway station in Tiverton rather than the one um, that's seven miles away out by the um, by the M5. Um, we did talk about the fact that Tiverton is still very rural and there was a reality that people, um, so certainly some people are going to need to be able to get around uh, using private motorised transport still. So we need to see electric charging in car parks, um, but also sort of zero carbon buses. Um, and then there's also a suggestion of having something uh, sort of quite novel, even outrageous in the vision um, around the prioritisation of pedestrians or cyclists within a transport hierarchy. So you might be able to depict something like um, a bridge or a level crossing that only allows cyclists or pedestrians to get across it, that sort of thing. Then we moved on to energy supply. That was very similar to David's group. Um, they want to see hydro, wind on high land, um, solar on commercial rooftops and then finally buildings um, we had a great idea that people supported of uh, some sort of show home in the community um, that could demonstrate how you could retrofit a building but that could also show low carbon behaviors 
and, and lifestyles as well. So it could also show the type of food that you might want to be eating in a low carbon lifestyle. Um, a sort of net zero museum uh, was the phrase that was used. And maybe that could even be a showroom in schools as well. So every school could have its net zero showroom. Um, and then we spoke about an existing programme of insulating um, council homes that's been quite successful. So maybe that could be shown in the vision uh, somehow on a particular group of properties somewhere in the vision. OK, that's what I jotted down. I've jotted down lots more. I've recorded it all here. But does anybody else want to add anything that I've um, that I've missed? Otherwise, back to Emma. Thank you, Doug. So, so many fascinating ideas there. And I think it'd be really good to to share some of these between us as well, because maybe there were things that came up in one group which um, weren't in another, but you'd like to adopt. Um, so let's go on to um, the Torbay and Biddeford group. And I think Ben was chairing this. Yeah, um, I, I'm happy to, to feed back on this um, if, if everyone's okay with that, because um, I, I was sort of taking notes as well throughout, so I can, I can feed back and then other people can, um, can chip in if they like. So we started off talking about um, uh, economy of recycling waste, and um, both Torbay and Biddeford were talking um, about uh lots of repair cafes men's sheds um and uh basically the, just around the idea of growing um the ideas that they they already have um lots of in, in biddeford um gardening uh community gardening and um soil and composting um and uh so we discussed um bobby gave us some really useful feedback about uh, the idea of creating a, a kind of zero carbon hub um, and maybe beginning with um, pop-up first that can be taken to the places where you already have these pre-existent groups who might be interested in it. Um, we talked about the importance of actually going to those places, engaging with, with groups um, that are already active in communities um, instead of sort of creating a hub and, and hoping that people will come over to you. Um, and, uh, and I think there was some good good cases in Biddeford of um, engaging with, um, working with the Women's Shelter and the Women's Institute um, at, uh, at the repair sheds. Um, so we're thinking about um, some sort of ideas for the future around um, community composting, repairing, recycling, and just making these more prominent, making these more, more visible. This is something that's often, um, often we don't think about kind of where, the, where our waste goes. So just, just bringing those into more prominent locations um, being an important thing. Uh, in transport, um, there's similar kinds of uh, ideas in both, in both areas around cycle lanes, charging points, the importance of walkways. Um, and, uh, the, and the need really if, if for any change in infrastructure to be coherently branded and to really create a more attractive alternative um, uh, to being in a car. So the importance of actually offering a really positive vision of this. Um, I think it was Ray who came up with a really nice idea of, of uh, thinking about it, if you could use v, um, VR or, you know, using virtual reality or, or, um, or games to envision new roads or new town centers. So actually to let people see what these alternatives could possibly be actually that, that, creative leap of imagining a car-free city centre or a car-free town centre um, and and then kind of working back from that and thinking about how you can get there. Uh, the discussion of energy was, um, had a really interesting discussion actually about that tension between energy efficiency um, in housing and and the need to preserve heritage and this came up particularly in relation to Torbay's Georgian seafront um, you know, how do you reconcile these two things these two elements um, and uh, there was some useful useful kind of ways forward offered um, around uh, Bath Heritage Trust doing some really interesting work um, there so that, that sort of need for a vision of this that that will allow for um, yeah, the preservation of heritage and build the reconcil reconciliation of heritage and um, energy efficiency and housing. Um, also, also discussions around um, the need for renewable energy, but also the difficulties of, of engaging renewable energy in those areas. Um, and another important thing that came up was just 
Um, communication between suppliers and communities in terms of energy and trying to actually create better links between communities and the, the suppliers of the energy that goes to those communities. Um, built environment, um, David was making some uh, very useful points about the need to adopt uh, more sustainable designs and building techniques, talking particularly about passive house designs. Um, and Graham uh, mentioned very usefully um, lots of the um, kind of difficulties of these of, of new builds and um, the kind of systemic difficulties that need to be overcome there around um, buildings not being built to last because of market particular market models. Um, so this was sort of recognised as being something that was that was a big problem. But um, I think Jackie also pointed out that this was this was something that could be partially addressed at a local level perhaps um but but still yeah a very a very big issue um so thinking of yeah really what would uh what would what would more sustainable housing look like and and actually graham made the point that um more sustainable housing would look very similar to to housing at the moment um a lot of those those differences would be uh would be kind of invisible um with food um finally we talked about the need for allotments um and but also, um, but also the importance of changing in diets and how this can be addressed, how, uh, and this being a very contentious issue, particularly in, in rural areas where there's lots of farming. Um, so Angelina talked about the importance of eating less meat, um, but better quality meat, um, and the idea of, of, of uh, promoting eating locally, um, locally grown, locally sourced foods in schools um, and uh, community events. Um, and yeah, promoting fruits and vegetables as the centre of the meal rather than um, rather than something that uh, rather than something that's that's always seen as, as being at the side. Um, so that was kind of what we talked about. Does anyone else from Torbay or Biddeford want to add anything else to that? We were just looking at our vision for what our town, what our best town could look like, weren't we? And and maybe being inspired by other communities. So. I got a lot, I think Liz and I were just saying on the chat, we got a lot from listening to Torbay. So I think that's 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 actually given us lots of thoughts on what we can carry our conversations on with. So. Fantastic. Thank you, Ben, for, for summarising and for Sarah adding to that. Um, Tom Murphy, would you like to summarise Plymouth's discussion, please? I am a, yeah, I can do that. Um, and again, feel free, um, those from Plymouth, to, to chip in up if I've missed anything at the end. Um, so we started with the built environment. Um, and I think what came out of our conversation was um, the importance of, of making um, buildings really place-based so that, that they were good spaces to, to be in and use rather than simply... Um, simply um yeah so there's a focus on the importance of, of community so um, um and also having having children to 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 be part so the next generation to be part of that that um that future um vision for the built environment um also what came out was um potential waste so buildings that have been built that actually might not need to be of being built. So thinking about Plymouth in particular, um, student housing is a is a big big issue. Um, um, so being very careful about, um, I suppose, when and where to to um, start afresh and and thinking about the embodied carbon that's that's required when we're we're building new buildings. Um, so I think. People raised an example of using, you know, materials like soil. So um, um, it's raised the, um, the example of uh, our campus um, cob building, which is made out of, of local soil. Um, so that I think covers the built environment. Um, but please chip in at the end. Um, the other. So when we moved on to food, land, and sea, um, I suppose what came out was um, the need for us to potentially pay more for our food but but that being really a hard thing to achieve for, for lots of communities 
um, in Plymouth. Um, I suppose what also came out from discussions was um, the need for local growers um, and for that to be able to feed into um, local supply chains. Um, also the issues of food waste, so um, um, perhaps having more facilities that that could be um, that could be minimised in future. Um, so food poverty really feeds into it, and that's a real um, key key theme of, of what we talked about in Plymouth um, on food. Um, so in terms of the economy and resources and waste um, highlights is actually you know, there's always already really good stuff happening. Um, so there's obviously we have a, um, a scrap store which um, is been around for quite a while but actually you know there's, there's still surprising there's not many people there's 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 still people who haven't you know come across it before um so it's actually making these these good things that are happening mainstream um we also talked about the way people shop and how young people are starting to change their habits and actually starting to, to reuse um, um stuff like items of clothing um, so almost a, a change in culture of the way people shop and, and we talked about um potentially um, changing, having sort of stores where this this sort of new 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 sort of consumerism, I suppose, happens in a um, in a more uh, prominent place. So having stop reuse stop, uh, sh uh, stores actually on in in sort of visible locations in the high street. Um, so to try and change that culture um, um, on transport. Um, so for Plymouth, um, one of the key points uh, we did we talked about cycling and the need to make cycling safe so there's been um, deaths on, on Plymouth um, fairly recently with um, with, with cycling uh, cyclists killed um, so it's, it's need to make that safer and make people feel comfortable um, also talked about the natural location of the city it being um, open to the waterways so we, we talked about almost a, a, a sort of a new new type of water taxi that would would allow people um, to to move to um, out of the city, um, uh, particularly in in the summer, um, and try and avoid that um, that transport that, that's that's sort of trying to funnel its way out. We also talked about um, potential connecting lines, uh, a rail line um, from Tavistock to Plymouth, which would take a lot of commuter pressure um, in Plymouth in particular um, in people's cars. Um, so I think, yes, it was really making use of our natural um, location in terms of our waterway. So connecting up up the river, um, Tamar in particular. Um, and on energy, we, we, we talked um, about um, solar, how solar might be, be used in Plymouth. Um, it's got lots of um, flat roof space, but we talked about also the difficulty of making them solar um, panels attractive. And there's an idea of having uh, which I think exists these flower shaped solar panels, which is quite sounds quite interesting. Um, we also talked about uh, the natural, uh, we've got lots of hills in Plymouth, so how it'd be really nice to be able to make use of the movement of water to really capture that energy um, and make energy from it. Um, I think that's a, a brief summary of it, but um, has anybody else got any points from the Plymouth um, community? Did I miss anything? That's not so that's Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That's great. Um, we pass over to Paul Lunt now and the Five Parishes Alliance. Hi, everyone. So um, we um, spoke, first of all, with um, Stuart about um, transport and the conversation was about uh, the accessibility of EV charging in particular and um, the need for, in rural areas, an integrated transport plan, uh, which includes cycling and walking. And there was quite a lot of discussions about the Sustrand cycling and the opportunity for a, um, a cycle path from Wimbury to, um, to Plymouth. Um, and also, particularly in relation to the, um, the rural location of the parishes, uh, car sharing, in particular co-cars, was, um, was mentioned. And, and generally a need to shift in attitude away from, um, from the need for cars. So that was our, um, our transport overview. Energy, there's quite a lot of similarity actually here, but um, 
there was discussion about uh, local electricity um, billing, um, so a kind of generation of um, electricity locally and, and billing of that electricity, and some of the problems associated with that, uh, particularly in relation to the, um, the creeks, discussion of uh, tidal energy lagoons, um, and also um, district community heating, particularly um, associated with, with heat pumps and how they could be better utilized. Uh, some discussion also about um, Kitley House and the Yelm in relation to um, to generation of um, of, of power uh, um, and the need basically to um, to have a kind of charging infrastructure associated with local generation of power, uh, be it solar farms or whatever. Uh, built environment was the next uh, discussions with Sarah. And um, the discussion basically founded on the fact that we need better performing buildings. And, and in particular, there was a feeling that, um, that the um, that planning policy just wasn't really fit for purpose and that we needed to be a little bit more courageous in what we ask for. And there was lots of discussions about uh, how things potentially go wrong and we don't necessarily get what we need to, that's fit for, for future purpose. Um, discussions about the need to generate energy at home, in particular with um, micro generation, and, um, domestic, even domestic wind turbines, uh, was was um, discussed. And then An Angelina, next we we talked about um, farm surplus and, and local distribution of farm uh, farm surpluses and the need to bring down the food miles, so producing locally for local people. And uh, there was a, a, also a discussion about um, the need to um, support people to learn how to grow and, um, and that we could produce more locally if, if there was a, a greater availability of a, um, allotments. And, and the discussion turned to the need to have a less uh, energy intensive food system uh, and that we needed to kind of have a, a change of attitude towards um, kind of locally produced food and, and lower meat. Um, consumption. And then finally on waste, um, there was discussion, although the term wasn't used, about the circular economy and, and, and in particular the need for um, community uh, composting systems that could potentially generate a revenue for the community, but also that that, that, um, that composting product could then feed into those local allotments so that we had a kind of nice um, circular uh, local, local production of compost and local growing. I think that was that was kind of um, there were many other things, but those were the kind of the key points that I, I got out of it. Um, I'm happy to hand over to anybody for any key points I might have missed for my group. Uh, thanks so much, Paul. Still getting called by mute um, all these years into Zoom. Uh, that was. Wonderful. And just to, can I say on behalf of everybody, really, um, thanks so much to all the experts and chairs for taking the time to be here and for informing everything we've spoken about. I mean, one of the most inspiring things about being on this project has been just people's willingness to come along and they're just seeing the assembled knowledge and insight that you can get in one room um, just from within Devon. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to Emma, who's going to close this workshop by talking about next steps. So can everyone see my screen here? Yes. Yeah, great, thank you. So I noticed there's quite a few people here from the last workshop, but there's also lots of new faces as well. So I thought it might be useful just to have a quick recap on the Commission Creatives who will be responding to the myriad of ideas that you've got here, pulling them into the visions and just giving a sort of brief overview of some of the next steps. So we have um, Ashley Potter, um, the BAFTA and Emmy Award winning animator and his animation team, um, Molly Noel and Sam Holland. And they're gonna be creating uh, an animation which captures all of the different communities, the seven different groups and places that we, we've um, talked about today. And so everyone should have received Ashley's series of questions. So if you haven't um, received those, just let me know. So these are 
um, his initial questions, which he's asking, I won't run through them all now, but the point of those questions is so that um, Ashley, Sam and Molly can begin to start doing the storyboarding process. So beginning to put some of those ideas that you're talking about into context, but also they're particularly interested in at this stage uh, in particular landmarks, particular places where you would like places you'd like to see visualized that would encapsulate your particular town or village and also any colors or um, insignia, any logos or mottos or anything like that, which you think would really leap out of the animation and tell people that it is your place that they're talking about. And equally, that could be sort of um, geological landmarks. It could be built environment. It could be all sorts of things. So um, Ashley's asking for you to send those. You can send it to me and I will pass those on. And he will start with his animation team beginning to pull those ideas together. And then they will um, present their storyboards, their initial storyboards at an event um, which will be organising end of March, April time. And that will be open to everyone to come along and to feed in to the ideas that they have drawn for you and to, to have a say in how you think it should be developed. So they're the next steps with the animation team. Um, Philip Harris um, will be creating um, illustration from, for most of the, um, the groups here, either a larger or smaller illustration. And you've probably seen from the, the Net Zero Visions website. And if you haven't um, seen that, this is the Net Zero Visions website, which is um, part of the Devon Climate Emergency website. And um, I would direct you to the Devon Climate Emergency website as well, if you haven't already looked at it, because all of these different themes are discussed there and there's lots of information. And of course, they're highlighting the power of information, uh, the power of the imagination in enabling change, which is what David has led on and has fed into this um, uh, Devon Carbon Plan. So um, Phil is very keen to know about, again, particular identifying features of your locations. So if you can feed those back to me, things that you'd like to see in that illustration and particular um, innovations or um, actions that you would like to see happening in your particular town and places as well. So very similar to the kind of information that Ashley is asking. So Phil would like to begin to start collating those so he can um, design the, the, the starting points for those very detailed and um, beautiful illustrations that he creates. Um, then we have um, Kate Crawford, who is, is also got another hat on today as part of the Plymouth team, but Kate will be creating a series of murals um, in some of the locations that um, have been represented to here tonight. And Kate's um, main concerns at this stage, as well as um, the, the ideas about the identifying features of your location and the key actions that you'd like to see featured. Those, um, the first priority is identifying the sound walls which can be used. And I've already been in communication with the places that will be um, ideally having a mural. So um, some of, um, so those are um, Plymouth, um, Ashburton and um, Tiverton. So ideally there will be a mural in those places. Um, so if, if you haven't um, been thinking about walls, um, that's the, the next step there to, to be thinking about walls. And then digital games. So there's gonna be a series of mini games created by Mutant Labs. And interestingly, I think someone mentioned games um, today as a, a means of helping people to um, put their ideas into practice, but also begin to see how you can make a connection between an idea and um, play. So how you can kind of play through those ideas and to communicate them. So Mutant Labs are gonna be creating a series of mini games. And what they'd really like to hear, um, particularly from the Exeter community, is what the problem is and then what the solution is. And this is the thing that they're going to be creating they're going to be gamifying so what the what the problem is and then how you propose a solution to that and then they will be creating those kind of um, game mechanisms in order to express that so 
Um, there are the, the next um, stages. There are obviously quite a few stages between now and the finished works in August, but we'd like you to be thinking about those things and I'll be in touch with you to gather some of that information. Um, also ask you to send through your questionnaires that we sent through before from the pack because we'll be collating that and the information from tonight. And so we'll be kind of be putting together those different visions for your communities to have a look at and see what you want to emphasize, which things you're not so keen on including and so forth. So we're at that kind of like intermediary stage here. And then there's also, in addition to the, the commissioned creatives, uh, I haven't mentioned actually the student AR commissions who will be responding to Kate's mural and creating this kind of dynamic interaction with the, with the static mural, these um, augmented reality experiences which the students are going to be making as well. And we're also going to um, thinking about having a community augmented reality element to that as well, which we can talk about um, at the March, April event. So the other thing that we just to highlight at this stage is, although we've got these commission creatives, lots of people have said, well, what about all the other artists, creatives that are out there in Devon who would like to get involved in this project? And the one of the other elements is uh, the online gallery, which is going to be featuring as part of the Devon Climate Emergency website. And so we invite anyone from across Devon, any community groups, any artists or creatives to put together their own creative visions, which we will feature on the website, put links to their work, and we potentially could have other showings of that work as well. So that's we will be promoting that in and giving much more detail um, as the project goes along but just to put that out there now so if you're interested in that then that's another way that you can engage in the project so i'll just hand back to david now and um, we're just coming up to eight o'clock so pretty much on time okay thanks so much emma so um lots to think about there lots of ways forward and basically I guess look to hear from us um, in the near future and we'll look forward to taking the project to look, uh, forward along all these routes with you and I guess also to stress as well that it seems to be already we're finding quite an idea that develops quite organically um, and has its own kind of power it goes running off along different routes so we've got people doing stuff in schools and all kinds of different routes and so we encourage people as well to keep in touch with us about different ways they might want to use this kind of process with their own communities and their constituencies. But thank you so much, everybody, for coming this evening. Thanks so much to Emma for shouldering so much of the organisational burden and shepherding us through multiple breakout rooms. And I look forward to, yeah, imagining more of the future in Devon with you in the kind of weeks and months to come. So thank you so much, everybody. And yeah, see and hear from you soon.